just said you approached him uh, soon after last game and saying, hey, you, you, maybe it's an idea would be for you to come off the bench. Why did you think that? And is that hard to say, hey, I'm, I've been starting for a long time here and let me come off the bench now? No. Um, you know, when I watch basketball, I, I'm studying and I studied the game <clears throat> and I saw what was working, you know, um, and we won, you know, so I'm a firm believer in if something isn't broke, you don't fix it. And, you know, our offense was rolling. We played good defensively, really good defensively. So I didn't want to um, come back and just shake things up because I'm back. Like, that's not right. Um, Jordan went out there. He played well. We played well. He earned it. And, you know, our team earned that. You know, you don't – there's a lot of um, – so a lot of guys who, you know, I mean, 11 years in, you start to feel a sense of entitlement. You know, like that spot's yours and starting is yours. And I, I, I never want to reach that point in my career where I feel entitled to something. Um, those guys don't, don't fare well in the end. So just wanted to do what I thought was best for this team, and it was good for us. It, they decided to have you guard Fox at halftime. Uh, how involved were you in those conversations? Did you like, you know, that change? And, and what did you just think of guarding Fox? Um, I mean, I loved it. Uh, you know, Fox is a great player, man. He's incredible. He continues to get better. And anytime, you know, you, you, you draw the assignment to go guard the other team's best, best player, you know, you, you appreciate the opportunity. And I, I definitely did. And wanted to go out and try to help this team win. and So I, as far as that conversation went, they just told me, like, yo, you got Fox? And I'm like, all right, cool. And I said, you try to take on that challenge and get his team what it needs. Specifically when you were watching game three, what were the things that you saw that you said, yeah, like that, that is really working. We have to keep that going. And then how do you think it just went in this game? Our spacing was great um, in game three. It was absolutely incredible. And, you know, I thought it was it was really good for our offense. And, um, you know, so when I saw that, you know, it was, number one, it was very evident of where I needed to be even when I am on the floor. And, you know, I think I did a good job of being where I needed to be tonight. I missed a bunch of layups, a whole bunch of layups. Um, but, you know, it, it kept the floor spaced the way it needed to be spaced, and I won't keep missing those layups, so... Uh, I thought it was great, but, you know, just really understanding uh, the spacing on the floor and, and how I needed to play in space as well, even um, no matter who I'm out there with. Raymond, um, immediately after, well, after that crazy ending, um, you went right to Bob Myers and had a word with him. Can you can you share anything about that interaction? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, was, we were just talking about the end of the game um, and really how I could be better. Um, at, at the end of the game. I know everyone will blame Steph and say, oh, man, he called the timeout. But I'm supposed to trail the play and uh, not leave him on an island, and I left him on an island. And then I gave up a three to Fox uh, and let them cut it to one as opposed to taking the three away. You're up four. If they score two, so be it. And uh, I didn't do that, you know. And so uh, we was just talking about that and, you know, how I could be better uh, down the stretch in that situation to make sure we don't get in that position again. Draymond, two quick ones. When you went into Kerr's office and said you wanted to come off the bench, if he had disagreed, would you have argued with him? No, no. <laughs> um, you know, it was just a suggestion. And also, <clears throat> you have to understand the position that, that coaches are in. Um, he's also in a position where I've done a lot. And to just take me out of the lineup because I'm suspended for a game, if 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 I don't agree with it, what could that do to this group, right? What could it do to us? Um, not that I would have disagreed, but I think it's more so to to let him know, like, if you all mull this decision, make it, right? Like, it's totally fine. And then he called me again yesterday, or um, what's today? Sunday. Okay, so. Yeah, he called me Saturday, and um, <clears throat> and we were just talking about it, and he was asking me, like, yo, what what are your thoughts? Like, 
this is why we wouldn't do it X, Y, and Z. I'm like, yeah, this is why we should do it X, Y, and Z. And, uh, you know, one of his words was like, but how are you going to feel coming off the bench? You have not come off the bench in, in uh, nine years in the playoffs. How are you going to feel? Who fucking cares? Like, who cares how I feel? Um, I mean, if, if I must answer the question for you, I'm fine. I'll be ready to go when it's time for me to go in, but it doesn't matter how I feel. I think the right thing to do will be to start the game the exact way we started game three. That's don't matter how I feel. And, you know, so many times I, I can appreciate that, um, you know, the courtesy, the respect, but who cares? It's about winning basketball games at this time of year, whether you come off the bench, whether you start, whether you play two minutes or 40. Winning the game is the most important thing. So those were some of the conversations we had, but I was um, definitely all for it. Okay. Second thing, quickly. Uh, is this the chance you guys have been waiting for all year to kind of flip that switch? You, you got to go up Sacramento on the road. You guys have been bad on the road. This is. I don't think it's truth. necessarily a, a f switch to flip. Um, we know what it takes to win on the road. We know what we go need. To, we need to go do, and you have to execute that. Um, but we've known what we need to do all year and didn't execute. So I don't think it's it's a necessarily a flip of a switch. Um, you know, it's locked in and focused on on what you need to focus on. And I. I have no doubt that we'll do that. Um, Draymond, in, in the first half of the first game after you're suspended, you get a technical foul. It's beautiful, it's, huh? It's very on brand. Absolutely. Uh, how, what message, in what the message world. were you trying to? I'm still here. And don't shit change. Still here. And ain't no tech moving me off my square. So, um, you know, Fox felt the need to stand up for his guy. I respect it. Uh, respect that 100%. But I'm still here. And don't nothing change me. Been this way for 33 years. I pray I can be this way for 33 more. And it won't just be basketball, right? Like that comes to an end. But I am who I am. And everything else just is what it is. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. Uh, not really. But <laughs> sorry. Uh, I like people to feel good. That's one thing in my life I really appreciate is people feeling good. So if this one makes you not feel so good, I apologize. But I am who I am. Draymond, does this does this uh does it feel better that you survived that kind of like wild ending where you made a lot of mistakes? Does it feel like encouraging that you survived it or is it more frustrating that you had a position to win and and gave them a shot to win it? No. Um you don't know, you don't carry frustrations in, in the playoffs. Uh, this is a regular season game. You you probably walk off and you're a little upset and you're like, man, like, should have never been this hard. But it's not. Uh, it's the playoffs and every game counts. And so whether, you, whether we win it going away and controlling the end or we have to fight to win it like we did today, you take the win and you move on now. Um, <clears throat> You look at that and you say, okay, what can we learn from that? Well, I know that I cannot leave the ball. I have to stay behind the basketball to give an outlet. All right, cool. I know and understand we're up four with under a minute to go. I, the last thing I can do is give up a three. I know that. you know. And so um, making sure everyone understands those things and don't make the same mistakes I make I think is extremely important. Uh, and you learn from that, but you don't walk off complaining or – uh, with, your, with your head down. You won the game in the playoffs, you ride that momentum and try to go get the next one. Graham, on this team, there's a tradition of guys stepping back and, and accepting a bench role or go back to Iguodala to start all this. Steph, last year when he was hurt, and he's, you know, he he's, comes off the bench for most of the Denver series. He even had Wiggins, as Steve mentioned, Wiggins. Is, do you feel this is just who you guys are? Was yours a little different than that, or is it just – something about the culture that says the main guys can take a step back at times? Um, <clears throat> uh, I mean, I think, you know, number one, is it's who we always have been. Uh, you, you have guys on this team that are strictly about winning um, and, and about the team. And, and if you are a guy that is not that way, you stick out like a sore thumb and because that's been the culture here. So for me, um, it was a very easy thing. We won the game. 
pretty handily. <laughs> You're going to just walk back in the door like, all right, fellas, I'm back, and here's my spot. Like, no, that shit don't work like that. Um, you do what's best for the team. And, you know, with me just sitting and watching that game, I just thought that was best, and I thought it was as clear as day. And I thought, um, you know, I could see that from a mile away, literally a mile away. And, you know, I just thought that was the right thing to do. And, you know, Steph thought it was the right thing to do. And, you know, Wiggs, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, your time is your time, and if it's not, it's just not. And I don't think it was my time to come in the starting lineup and make things about me. It, we won game three try to do the same thing in game four. Could it be the right thing to do the rest of the series? If that's what Coach uh, thinks and uh, that's what works, absolutely. I will have to go watch the film and see, you know, how all of those things fare throughout the course of this game. Um, but if it's right, it's right. I don't care. Um, I'm going to play the same amount of minutes I normally play, and it doesn't really matter. So that's kind of my mindset. Draymond, speaking of, of collaboration, when a couple of assistants mentioned at halftime, let's let's put Draymond on Fox in the second half. I mean, how how did that conversation go, and how did you uh, like that challenge? Uh, it was just very simple. Um, yo, you guarding Fox, and this is what we're doing. Um, I love the challenge. Um, you know, Fox is a great player, and you know, anytime you get have the opportunity to guard a great player. You take on the challenge and you feel good about it and you go meet force with force. And so that's what I wanted to do. Um, <clears throat> you know, I always knew, you know, as this series is going, that's something that we had in our back pocket. Uh, if I'm being honest, I was very happy that we pulled that card out of the pocket. Um, and Wiggs was doing a great job, you know. But when you have a great player like De'Aaron Fox, you can't just give him a steady diet of anything. Like, it can be, it can work wonders. Great players eventually figure it out, and so, you know, uh, it was it was a different look that we gave them, and I thought it was, um, you know, it was good. And you know, when you get in these playoffs, it's a chess match. You know, we know them, they know us, and you know, so who's going to pull the card at the right time is important in these series. And I thought Steve and our coaching staff did a great job. Draymond, uh, Steve said that Clay's defense was vintage two-way Clay. What have you seen about his progress <coughs> on that side of the ball? Well, his progress is great. Um, you know, he and Rick and our training staff, they continue to put the work in. Uh, on off days, he's in here putting the work in, making sure his body is ready to go. So you can always appreciate the effort um, that guys are putting in that everyone doesn't get to see in the world. You know, you know uh, when the preparation is there. And he's been preparing, and he's continued to do that. Uh, no, You know, he's been back playing all year, yet he's in that weight room every day training room every day, doing the things that he needs to do to not only be ready to go, but to continue to get stronger, you know, and, and, and he's doing that. Uh, as far as him competing and looking like Clay, it's, it, it's April. That is who Clay Thompson is. Um, he is one of the biggest winners, biggest and best winners I've ever been around. Um, that is what matters most to him. So it's never a doubt uh, whether he's going to compete or not. That's who he is, and that's why we've had the success. Um, when he's healthy and when he was not, that's why we suck. Considering everything that is at stake, was at stake, what are you thinking when the ball gets swung to Barnes and he rises up three for the win? You got to make that. It is what it is. We know Fox can make a shot. He won clutch player of the year. So what I'm not doing is giving him an ISO with anyone um, and just watching him work and living with that. We're not going to live with that. Uh, we know that. Got to make somebody else beat you. If he hit it, great shot. He didn't. And, you know, <clears throat> whether he hit it or not, it's the right thing um, to make someone else beat you. He didn't. It worked. Great shot. Draymond, you guys in the first half got <clears throat> beaten on the, on the glass pretty good. Third quarter, you guys came out with a whole different energy, it looked like, in addition to you, de you know, defending uh, Fox. What changed in the third quarter? Because the energy level really went up. Uh, we put bodies on bodies. We understood that, you know, they had um, their physicality. Uh, they controlled that department in the first half. And if you want to win these games, you have to control the physicality department. Um, they controlled it 
pretty handily the first two games. They walked with those two games. We controlled it in game three. We won pretty handily. They controlled it in the first half. They were ahead at halftime. We controlled it in the second half. We were able to pull a win out. So uh, it's very evident how important that is in this series. And I knew, um, you know, we needed to be better in that department. So you try to take some things up on yourself and, and you know, make sure you're bringing the level of physicality that needs to be brought. And, you know, at the same time, also lead, you know, and, and show other guys what that level of physicality need need to be. And everybody fell in line and did that. Loon, uh, who's also a leader in that department, stayed physical the entire game, and everybody else. You just mentioned Clay, uh, who was physical as hell the entire game. And so, you know, uh, Wiggs was super physical, you know, and that's what it takes to win these games. Great, thanks. We'll have Steph, Clay, and Lumia.